you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our chairman and vice chairman uh, are absent tonight uh, for more pressing matters. Uh, one is in a hospital and uh, one has a much more pressing meeting right now. Uh, and because of that, we have to elect a chairman. Uh, and I will take a motion to uh, nominate someone for chairmanship. Pug? I would nominate Dave Doherty. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, anyone else? Move that the nomination be closed. Nominations are closed. Uh, everyone, would you please vote? The motion is carried unanimously. Dave, I'm sorry, but you're temporarily chairman. whether to, to thank you or, uh, or, or just what now, but uh, I do appreciate it, and, and uh, we'll move this uh, meeting on. Uh, public announcements, uh, phones and pagers, please put those on vibrate or turn them off. If you disagree with any decisions uh, this commission makes, you have the right to appeal. There are appeal cards on my uh, right over here on the the railing and uh, you can fill one of those out and turn it into staff and they will get it to, uh, to the proper place. Speaker cards, if you wish to speak on an item, there are speaker cards over there. We ask that everyone that wishes to speak fill one out. So if we need to get in touch with you, uh, we can, plus we will uh, know who you are. Uh, each item uh, for the public will have uh, 10 minutes each side uh, with an opportunity for a five-minute rebuttal. After the item is heard, we ask that you please exit the building. Don't just go out in the lobby because uh, that sound uh, comes back into the uh, chambers here. Uh, please rise for the invocation by uh, Mr. Randolph and Ms. Casabon, the pledge. Gracious Father, once again, we come to you to say thank you for all the blessings you bestowed on our lives. We thank you for watching over and protecting us all day. We thank you for this commission, Lord. We thank you for our council. We thank you for the citizens that we serve. And Lord, let us be able to make decisions that's in the best interest of all. And we also ask a special blessing on Mr. Davis, Jimmy's dad, in his surgery. And all these blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, just so that you know when you see the votes come up on the, uh, the monitors, my vote will be under the, the name of Manila, the, the normal chairman. And since I'm sitting here, it's going to come up uh, as Manila. Um, each of you in your package, you had the January 13th uh, uh, minutes. Uh, were there any necessary corrections or, or anything that need to be? I'll accept a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the January 13th minutes. Uh, please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, consent calendar. Any items not pulled from the consent calendar are automatically dispensed by vote as approved and are as per staff comments. Items full from the consent calendar uh, shall be discussed and voted on uh, individually. Uh, staff, do you have any that need to be pulled? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, do. On uh, page two under the uh, revocation closing review, 
Uh, REV 14 12 002, uh, the applicant requests tabling uh, postponement. <clears throat> okay. Also, also on page three, under preliminary subdivision review, the applicant uh, requests tabling. Uh, they still have to work out some infrastructure issues with the detention pond. Uh, that's uh, the, for the, uh, the only case under preliminary, and all of that would be North Park, and also under final subdivision review, the same case under final for North Park, same, same reason. All right, is that all? Yes, sir. <clears throat> all right. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, sir. Oh. Oh. Go ahead. I, I noticed that we have to do a waiver on the minor subdivision, so don't we have to pull it? Oh, I'm sorry, you, you are right. The, the we, first yeah, case. We'll have to pull it. Yeah, yeah MS, uh, the MS 15-01-003. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Well, Any others need uh, to be pulled? Mr. Chairman, we're on postponements right now? Postponements. Okay, yeah. and then, then we're going to go back to the consent calendar? Okay. I move to postpone REV 14-12-002 for 30 days. Until next meeting, Ralph. Okay, we have a, <coughs> a motion by Mr. Matthews, second by Mr. Richard, uh, to postpone the REV 14 12 002, revocation of a portion of Algiers Street, Slidell, Louisiana, Ward 8, District 12. The applicant is Own Your Own LLC, the surveyor is J.V. Burks and Associates. This is in uh, Honorable Jerry Bender's council district. Uh, please vote on postponing. Motion carries. Right. Mr. Chairman, I'd move to postpone SD 1204-002 PIVB for 30 days or the next meeting. All right. Uh, Second. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Randolph. Mr. Drum? Mr. Matthews. Matthews. Okay. Who second? Mr. Willie? Okay. SD 12 04 002 PIV B, North Park Phase 4B, Ward 3, District 5. The developer owner is Greengate North Park LLC. Engineer is Deep South Design Group. This is in honor, uh, Parish Council District Honorable Marty Dean. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries to postpone until the next meeting. All right. Mr. Chairman, I would move to postpone SD 12-04-002 FIV-B for 30 days or the next meeting. Motion by Mr. Matthews to postpone SD-04-002 FIV-B and seconded by Mr. Uh, Randolph, North Park Phase 4B, Ward 3, District 5. Developer owner, Greengate North Park, LLC. The engineer is Deep South Design Group. Uh, again, this is in Honorable Marty uh, Gould's uh, uh, Parish Council District. Uh, motion by Mr. Matthews, seconded by... Mr. Randolph. Randolph. Mr. Randolph. Okay. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Right. Chairman, as to the consent calendar, uh, as you know, uh, we are going to be recommending, hopefully tonight, to the council to do away with the consent calendar in its entirety, and I therefore would move to pull all items on the consent calendar. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Matthews to pull uh, items MS 15-01-004 and MS 15-01-005. Do I have a second? Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. That includes the entering the parish right away and the minor subdivision, MS 15-01-003. That one was already pulled, I believe. No, it that wasn't, wasn't yet. Okay, uh, that's right, Ron just, uh, okay. All right, th that also includes- like Four and five, yes. Mr. Matthew said the entering parish rights away. We have a motion by Mr. Matthews to pull. Do I have a second? I'll second. 
Mr. Richard. I'll second. Okay, second by Mr. Richard. Please vote. Uh, we have seven yeas and one nay. All right. Who's the nay? Oh, Caswell. <laughs> Right. <coughs> Under entering the parish rights, rights of way, servitudes and easement on page one, entering parish right of way, uh, 19th Avenue, Ward 3, District 5, request to enter parish right of way for the purpose of gaining access to property. The debtors T, J, and C, Real Estate Holding, LLC. This is in Honorable Marty Gould's district. Staff? <coughs> Yes, this is a request to uh, enter the parish right away to gain access um, to the property. Uh, part of it's already constructed. They're just going to be extending out on it. Um, you can sort of see a little outline box on the, the aerial overhead. Um, we don't really have any uh, objections to it. Okay. All right, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on this item? Yes, sir. Mr. Shane? Thank you, Mr. Darty. Jeff Shane of the Jones Fusel Law Firm in Covington. I represent the owner and petitioner. If there's any questions from the commission, I'll be glad to address them. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wish to, to speak on this, either for or against? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Uh, Mr. Matthews. Jeff, I've got a couple of three questions, if you wouldn't mind. Is, is this not going to become a public street? Well, it is, a, private. it is a public right of way, so it, uh, we are not asking that it be revoked. We're just asking for permission to build a road pursuant to parish specs in the public right of way. That, that was going to be my second question. It's going to be built to parish specs. Is this going to be a one-way or a two-way street? A two-way. It'll two -way. be a continuation. There's a stub there already off of 190. This is between the Times Picayune building on the west side of 190 and North Park Nissan, which is on the south side of 19th Avenue. I represent the owner of North Park Nissan. They wish to extend this stub, if you will, of 19th Avenue further to the west. Those questions being answered, I'd move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Matthews to approve, seconded by Mr. Richard. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is entering parish right of way, Lake Street, Ward 4, District 5. Request to enter parish right of way for the purpose of gaining access to property and existing uh, improvements. The debtor is NGA Tron and uh, Andrew Johnson. This is in Honorable Marty Gould's Council District. Staff? Uh, yes, this uh, enter the parish right of way was. Um it's there, there's the construction was already in there, so they're just trying to get the legality through it uh, to have permission to re remain everything to remain the same. Uh, it was legal determined that they need to go through this process just to make it official. Um, so engineering has no objections uh, as long as they y'all have no problems with it. All right, thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this? Yes, ma'am. Please come to the microphone. State your name, and if you haven't filled out a speaker card, please do so. Hello, I'm Leslie McGoey, and my property is opposite the street of Elmer Street, or behind Mr. the property that we're describing. I am concerned that if he opens up Lake Street, that could continue into Elmer. Elmer is a dead end street, which could, if we continue around, it could then connect to salt, and so those people could then try to cut and avoid the 1088 Salt Street connection. Does that make any sense? So I don't know whether, I know that it's existing, but I need to make sure that it doesn't actually connect with Elmer Street. All right. Done. Is there any comment from staff on that? Um, well, these are unconstructed right-of-ways that, that have already been uh, recorded. So to, to say that they couldn't be constructed at a later date, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if there's any, uh, any way to say no, that couldn't happen. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let legal comment on that also. I concur with Jim. 
That's correct, Jeremy. Um, it is currently an unopened parish right of way. Um, there are some undeveloped parcels of land in that general area um, where a landowner may wish to open Lake Street um, for purposes of accessing their property. Uh, and so that may occur. And in this particular case, there's an existing driveway, I believe, that is accessing an existing house. It just so happens that the driveway um, impinges upon the area of the unopened road right of way. Um, I don't believe, Jeremy, that there's any building structure that in, impinges on the um, right of way or, or does it? Yes, there is. There's actually um, a covered part of that driveway about seven feet. If you look at the, uh, the survey that Sean Burks put together, um, dated uh, October 17, 2003, um, he actually measures all that off and seven foot uh, of a covered concrete is there. Uh, within the right of way, which would need to be taken into account if somebody does decide to come in here and open up and construct that uh, Lake Street right of way. Um. Well, that's correct. I mean, you may very well see uh, the adjacent property owner on the other side of Lake Street having to dedicate uh, a piece of land to compensate for that uh, obstructed right-of-way area in order to meet the minimum width of that road right-of-way that the parish requires, assuming it's not already there. But to answer your primary question, this doesn't have anything to do with the opening of Lake Street. Whether or not that may occur in the future just depends on whether somebody wishes to open it, um, like I said, for accessing their own property. And could it end up be a connecting uh, road to Elmer? Um, yes, it could. Um, but the parish, suffice it to say, is highly unlikely that the parish will be opening that road up itself. It generally does not do that. It is incumbent upon the property, the adjacent property owners, to actually open up right of ways and bring them to parish standards. May I ask one more question, please? Sure. So with granting the permission of what he is asking here, does that limit it to the road's driveway right now, or does that allow him to go further than his driveway? This just allows him right now to encroach into the unopened right-of-way. He's not looking to uh, construct it. Um, I'm not quite sure if, if the applicant's here to explain out what they possibly want to he's do. He's in the room. Right. The okay. applicant is here. Um, so how I'm taking it, he's just looking for uh, permission to keep this all and make it make it legal until at some point they do construct uh, the roadway, whoever whoever that is, be it the applicant if he chooses to do that or be it some other property owner within the vicinity. Does that answer your question? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's just—he's looking for approval to uh, have encroachment. Why, on why, the, why don't we right let away. let him, if he's here? There we go. Perfect. Make the explanation. Hey, folks. Hi. How y'all doing? My name is Andrew Johnson. I'm the uh, owner of the property in question. Um, the concerns that they, the folks have, appreciate the, the concerns they have, and, and I don't have a problem with them them voicing those concerns. My intention is. This right of way, this driveway that currently exists, you know, when I purchased this property, you know, you kind of thought, well, this must be the driveway. Well, apparently it wasn't. And so this is just a formality giving me the right to utilize this driveway at this point in time to access the house. There is no culvert. There is a culvert in this particular spot. Who placed it there in the past? I don't know. But if it was 20 feet over, then that would technically be on my property and my driveway. But, you know, in the past, I don't know who, who originally put the culvert in the position that it's in, making it kind of in a position where the driveway is in this Lake Street. My intention ultimately is not to open the road to Elmer 
but just to have the ability to drive over this culvert legally and, and access the house. Um, like she mentions, and like y'all mentioned, this is a, a street that's dedicated on the maps. If somewhere down the line, 10 years, you know, whatever, someone decides further down Elmer or into the, the woods to open up this road, I don't know, you know, it's, it's not gonna be me, but um, the last council meeting we had, there's five acres next door, and I don't know how that really relates to this particular Lake Street, but I would actually make you aware that there's a five acre parcel that applied for sewage permits and, and a bunch of stuff, and they're gonna go ahead and put in some stuff, and I don't know if that developer who it is um, may somehow mess with this Lake Street stuff. But it, trust me, it's not gonna be me. Uh, I just wanna have access to my house. And the only way to get to it, you know, is to put in a new culvert or, you know, go across this culvert that's already existing. It's been used probably for the last 30 years. All right, yeah. the legal would like to ask you a question. Mr. Johnson, I heard engineering state that apparently part of your structure is actually in the road right away. What what part of that structure well, is it all right. that's in the right of way? I purchased this house and I'm, I'm I'm slowly piecing this all together. And um, but the garage ends where that line is, and I assume that the the red lines next to the house is a covered lean to, a lean to that you can drive like a lawnmower or maybe park a small car under there. But, uh, you know, it's more of just a, a, a shingled rooftop with four by fours holding it the other end up and it's bolted to the side of the house, you know. So it's not like it's a, a major, it wouldn't be a major effort to eliminate that part. But the fact that the house itself is so close to the property line makes me wonder what was going on in 1970. So, you know, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm just dealing with what I got right now. Well, I, I mean, personally, I agree with you. If, if the lean to is the only portion, um, that is impinging <clears throat> on the right of way, it probably, at least in my personal opinion, would not be that much of a hardship that for it to be removed, but you would still be left with the fact that the house itself would not meet ordinary setback requirements uh, to the right of way anyway. So arguably, what's the purpose of removing the lean-to if you've got bigger well, problems um, yeah. in addition to that? And, and that's why I mentioned earlier that whoever does decide to open Lake Street is likely gonna to have to address that issue um, if the right-of-way width does not meet the parish standards. It may need to be compensated on the other side of the street. But I believe the lady's main concern was, you know, could, does this um, matter uh, that is before the commission if the commission approves it, will it give you any ability to um, open up the, the right of way of Lake Street um, to do something else with it? And the answer to that is no. All this does is to give uh, Mr. Johnson, <clears throat> quote unquote, the legal ability to uh, have part of his driveway in the road right of way and that little lean-to shed that you just told him, uh, you heard him speak about. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Okay. Uh, anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? I'll close it to the public, bring it back to the commission. Ms. Casabon. Yes, I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Ms. Casabon to approve uh, Mr. Willie second and Mr. Matthews. Got some real questions here. Um, Mr. Johnson, come back up, please. What, how much of this the property shown in this survey do you actually own? Do you own lots one, two, three, and four? One through ten. You own one through ten? 
Okay. So what would prevent you from doing what probably should have been done, but run your driveway from lot two up to lot three into Highway 1088? At this point, funds. You know, um, I think that this was something that was in existence, and, and our lawyer had noticed that, you know, we, we should go through this formal process. So instead of redoing the culverts and, and going through all that, uh, I, I'm still trying to get my electricity turned on. So, you know, because I have to put in a new septic system. And then, then I was told that the sewage system is going to be expanded this year to allow me to tap into the main sewer line. So, you know, I got a lot of things going on here that are a little bit more, you know, no electric. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a project. When, when, when and, did you buy this property? Uh, last year, last, last year. year. Okay. Yeah. Was and, there a survey done at that time? Uh, no, no. No so, survey done. No, when no you survey the done. Property. No. And um, Ooh, okay, that's so risky. Well, Mr. Matthews, if if I may interject one thing that may be of help, uh, um, hypothetically, if Mr. Johnson were to either voluntarily or compelled to move his driveway to coincide with what lot one. Mm -hmm. of his property there would be a problem I believe with the state uh, and its rules concerning how close a driveway can be to an intersection with a road so in the event that in the future like the lady was speaking about if Lake Street was opened you would have a driveway right next to that intersection and as I appreciate it, the state frowns on that type of scenario fronting a state highway. So what you will likely see is when in Lake Street is opened, wherever, whenever that may be, um, Mr. Johnson's driveway will no longer be usable. He will just have to turn off of 1088 onto Lake Street and access his house that way. I can park in the living room. Because. Well, no, because you would have the ability to turn essentially off of Lake Street onto your property. Right. Right. I mean, do you understand that that yeah. may be yeah. a, a possibility mm -hmm. in the future? That's, you know, and, and, you know, so, you know, going down the, I'm, I'm waiting on sewage. I'm, I'm you know, this is not a, a thing that's, I'm, I'm rush doing. I like going out there, cut the grass, you know, and, and just hang out. But, um, you know, whatever y'all decide to do is fine with me. It just, uh, this is well, just. I, I'm concerned that your actual entrance on 1088 might very well be on the next piece of property there, uh, down 1088. Uh, what, number three? It looks like the Lake Street would be pretty doggone wide. What, number three? Lot three? No. Your entrance on 1088. Mm -hmm. is far enough, I guess, west uh, that it would appear that it may well be on the adjacent property that's immediately across Lake Street from you. The next adjacent property is a trailer. Um, it's already, well, I don't care about it's, that. It's, it's, it's already somebody, there. Somebody owns it. It's, well, it's already there. It's, it's the, the, the trailer's fenced off, and between this culvert and that fence line for the trailer that is, I assume, the next is the property next to Lake Street. Well, we don't know that without a survey, yeah, but it looks but like th that's a question. I drove out there today, and it looks looks very suspicious. Like this could very well be onto uh, the well, 39 here uh, that it might take in his his property. So you may have actually your driveway on entrance on somebody else's property. The, That's the, a the, the Lake Street is, is, is 30 feet wide. Okay. And I don't think that that well, culvert, I, I, know I think that think. culvert is going to fall within that 30 feet. Well, that's, you know? what, that's what you think. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty and certain. When, when I passed it today and stopped and took a look, I think it may very well be on the other property. Uh, I'm just concerned that your you're taking over our Lake Street to use as your, your private driveway. 
you purchased this piece of property without a survey, so you you got a pig in the poke here. That's all right. Uh, and you, I think you really ought to run your driveway on your property rather than taking over our parish uh, street. It's going to make future uh, opening up Lake Street uh, very difficult for the parish to deal with dealing with you. And I, I just don't see any reason to do this when you have the ability to run your driveway across lot two, lot one, onto Highway 1088. Uh, I don't know how close that is to, uh, to Salt Street, and I don't know if that's a problem for you, but right now it doesn't seem to be. Uh, and you also have an, uh, access to your property on Elmer Street, that you could run a driveway from Elmer Street around to your house. Um, you know, there, there is no compelling reason to give you this right away. Uh, you're not landlocked. Uh, it's just really convenient for you. And quite frankly, I don't really see that that's a problem. Your, your lawyer quotes uh, Revised Statutes 95627, and that doesn't give you any rights because it talks about buildings. Uh, and if there is a substantial problem in removing the building on the right of way, then two years prescription will apply. And you yourself have said that there's only a little lean to thing here, that it would not be a substantial problem to move. So your lawyer quoting RS 9 uh, 5627, I think is, is, is wrong. I looked it up. Um, so I know we have a motion to approve this. However, I think we should not. Mr. Lord. The only question I have, if you <clears throat> if you put the, the driveway from lot two and four where the house is, either to the north up to 1088 or to the south down to Elmer Street, would not the right of way for Lake Street still remain? So you is that bug? a question for me? Say Pardon? Again? Is that a question for me, Pop? That's a question for, for our attorney. What I'm saying is if you, <clears throat> if he accessed lot two and four where the house is, two, four, and six, either to the north or to the south <clears throat> across his own property, let's say he did that, you'd still have the right of way for Lake Street. We're not going to do away with that. So the problem that the lady mentioned before would still be there. Well, I, I believe, Mr. Lauren, that the fact that there is a structure in the road right of way, that is the biggest obstruction, if you will, and not easily removed or addressed. Uh, in its entirety. Uh, however, I think as Mr. Matthews was saying, it's the driveway that is encroaching upon the road right away the most. And so if the commission was inclined not to approve his use of a portion of the road right of way essentially as a driveway, then he would need to find an alternative method of accessing his property. Like Mr. Matthews correctly pointed out, he, he would have the ability <clears throat> to access the property um, from Elmer Street. However, there happens to be a pool. Um, yeah, I filled in the pool. Between, uh, I beg your pardon? The pool's been filled in. Oh, it's been, well. Then uh, he could ac this. yes, but I don't think that um, I would suggest that the mere fact that he owns other lots, um, unless of course that portion of lot six in which that house is already sitting, it could be used to access that existing structure. Uh, another alternative. Um, that I can see right now is the commission may want to consider 
whether to grant Mr. Johnson um, access to the Lake Street right-of-way in order to open it a sufficient length to access his property similar to what the driveway is currently doing. Now, granted, um, there is, I would suggest to you, a cost that would be incurred in um, having Mr. Johnson do that. Um, so I would suggest to the commission that, you know, the, the, the balance perhaps would be, okay, right now you have an existing driveway, may have been there for a number of years, um, and right now there has been no request for, by anyone to open the Lake Street right-of-way um, to access property. So uh, is there any um, adverse impingement on that right-of-way by the driveway at this time, at least to the parish as owner of the right-of-way? That is a question that, that the commission would need to, to consider. Um, and I think as Mr. Johnson recently said, he understands that in the event that some other property owner wants to come in and open Lake Street in order to access their property, let's say on the other side of the street, they would be able to do so. And Mr. Johnson would no longer have a driveway accessing his property, but rather he would have the opened portion of Lake Street accessing his property. Does that answer your question, Mr. Lauren? Well, <clears throat> I'm I'm trying to read this <clears throat> survey that we have, and I guess my question is: is are you accessing the house now down down the driveway? That's uh, ninety percent of the time. I might I'll, I'll go off of ten eighty eight because it you know I can pull right up to my garage. Sometimes I'll, I'll go down Elmer Street and park on Elmer Street. I don't like to do it because then I end up driving on the grass. You know, uh, the, the driveway actually has rocks and shells that have been built up over time that, you know, it's a firm foundation. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I mean, but I, I go down Elmer Street sometimes too. But I guess my question is, <clears throat> no matter if he, he gains access from the north or from the south or from the east or the west, Lake Street is still the right way, is it not? Yes. Okay. Yes. And he's using a portion of it right now as a driveway. Uh -huh. And if you make him move over, put it, put another driveway on lot three as a solution, that driveway is still going to be there, <laughs> and it's still going to be a right away, <laughs> unless somebody goes over there and plows it up. <laughs> that was my only point. All right, Ms. Casbaum? Yes, I, my comment is that at this time, as, a, as Mr. Lawrence said, he's been using this as a driveway. I understood it, correct me if I'm wrong, that this is just clearing up a, a legal aspect. He's been there, the, this particular area has been developed since the 70s and it may not have had the surveys as, as they do today. But <clears throat> I think this is an undue hardship to suggest that you know, he builds a road to go through whatever when he's just asking to put it on paper legally to use the driveway he's been using. Okay. All right. Do you have any further comments, Mr. John? No. Okay. All right. Uh, there's no lights on. We have a motion and a second on this. Please vote. Motion carries uh, seven yay and one nay. Thank you. Right. Have a good night, folks. Thank you. All right, the next item was pulled. All right, the minor subdivision, MS 15-01-003, a 1.04 acre parcel in the parcels A and B, Ward 2, District 6. The owner is Larry E. King. Uh, the surveyor is Edward J. Murphy, and this is in Honorable Richard Tanner's district. Can, Staff? 
Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, uh, the reason why we're having a public hearing is both of the parcels, if you look at the survey attached behind the staff report, both parcels do not meet the minimum one acre requirement per the uh, minor subdivision requirement. Uh, the owner is proposing to create two parcels from a 1.03 acre tract. Parish code requires that each lot created must be at least one acre in size, while both proposed lots will be only 0 0.65 acres each. However, due to the existing circumstances where there are already two existing homes on the 1.3 acre parcel, and the owner simply wants to separate the two houses for resale purposes, and the fact that the property is currently zoned A3 Suburban, which would permit the current resubdivision proposal, if not for the minor subdivision requirement for the one acre minimum, the staff has no objections to the proposed minor subdivision request. However, since a waiver of the regulations are required in order to approve the minor subdivision request relative to lot size issue, a two-thirds majority vote of the full membership of the commission, which is eight members, is needed to approve pursuant to section 40-100, waiver of regulations of subdivision ordinance number 499. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this? <coughs> yes, sir. Please come forward, state your name. Be sure to fill out a speaker card. Good evening, folks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Larry King, and uh, the property they're talking about belongs to me. And uh, what I want to do is just give my grandson a, a house, <laughs> is what I want to do. And I realize that it's, it's not the full acre that's required, but being we have a house there, we got a driveway there, we got water, we got electricity, and he's been living in the house for six, seven years. I thought maybe, you know, that we could find it in our hearts to let us divide this and uh, get on with the uh, letting my grandson have his first house. I would appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. King. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Uh, Ms. Casabon. Yes, the, the houses are existing <clears throat> in this particular area. I'll make a motion to approve. And I'll second that because I agree with her. Motion by Ms. Casabon to approve, seconded by Mr. Willie. Any further discussion by the commission? Please vote. Motion carries, thank you. And that did re require the eight votes and it did get the eight votes. All right, page two, uh, MS 15-01-004. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, yes. excuse me. Should I have made it for to the record that, that the waiver was needed or not? We understand that, that we had to have eight votes for the waiver? Yeah. Okay. That was part of the staff comments, yes. Okay. But I, didn't know, I didn't make it part of my motion is what okay. I'm saying. Okay. We, we clear, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I can fix it. You agree? It didn't need to be part of our motion. Yeah. <coughs> okay. All right. It was part of the staff comments. All right. Next item on page two is MS 15-01-004, a 10.35 acre parcel in the parcels A, B, and C, Ward 1, District 3. Owner is Susan P. Kerr and others. Uh, the surveyor is John E. Bono and Associates Incorporated. Okay. This is an honorable Red Thompson's district staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this proposal is uh, the reason why the public hearing is required is that one of the lots is being accessed by a private drive. Uh, the owner is proposing to create two parcels from one parent parcel. And since the private drive will only provide access to one parcel within the minor subdivision, said drive is not required to be built to a pair of standard pursuant to section 40-045 minimum standards for a private drive of subdivision ordinance 499. Therefore, the staff has no objections to the proposed minor subdivision request. Thank you. Anyone in the audience to speak on this item? Yes, ma'am. State your name and... Be my, sure to spill uh, out a 
Fill out a speaker card. Okay. I'm Susanna Kerr. We're uh, doing this to uh, finish up a succession that um, my parents left behind property. So that's basically why we're, we're trying to subdivide and do everything else. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Mr. Willie. Um, yes, I, I move to approve. It, it's fine in that area. Second. Motion by Mr. Willie to approve. Second by Mr. Lorne. Any further discussion by any of the commissioners? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is MS 15-01-005. A 3.5 acre parcel in the parcels A and B, Ward 1, District 1, <coughs> Wayne and Jeannie Moyer, uh, LS uh, Land Surveying is the surveyor. This is in uh, Honorable Marty Dean's district. Staff? Hey, Mr. Chairman, this is the same exact situation as the, uh, as the minor subdivision that you just heard. Uh, the property is one lot, and it's being uh, access, and it's, it's a one parcel being divided into two, and one of the parcels is being accessed via a private drive. Uh, the owner, again, is proposing to create two parcels from one parent parcel of 3.5 acres. Uh, private drive is not required to be built to pay our standards pursuant to Section 40-045 of Subdivision Ordinance 499. Therefore, the staff has no objection to the proposed minor subdivision request. Okay, thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this? <coughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Please state your name and fill out a speaker card if you haven't already. Yes, sir, I will. Uh, I'm, I am Wayne Mollier, and uh, again, similar to several others, uh, this is a uh, result of a succession of a mother's a property, and. Uh, and I have a son living in, in her house, and we want to build a house on the two acres behind. And so we, they'll be there with the family. So, okay. So, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? I would suggest that, that you stay up here for just a, a few minutes because I'm sure there's going to be a couple of questions. All right, I don't see anyone else coming forward. I'm going to close the floor to the public. Uh, Mr. Lauren. Yes, Mr. Mulyer, the only question I have is, again, we're looking at the, the survey. <clears throat> what would the access be to parcel B? We just heard the case a minute ago about accessing property. Yes, sir. There, there's a 40-foot uh, right-of-way that is on the right-hand side of the property that we will access the <coughs> two acres in the rear. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Thank yes, you. sir. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Casbon? Yes, I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Ms. Casbon to approve. Second. Second by Mr. Randolph. All right, I do have a, a question. Looking at the copy of the survey we have here, uh, the driveway actually goes over your property line on the east side. Is that correct? Is the survey correct? Okay. Um, now, there's actually an existing driveway there. I understand that. And that, that's, uh, a, 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 <clears throat> excuse me, I'll have to give you a little history there. Uh, I originally owned the acreage to the east. Okay. Okay. And my mother <coughs> and dad owned the acreage to the right. There is one driveway there existing right now that feeds the two houses okay. that exist. And so... Uh, as to not use that same existing driveway to access parcel B in the rear, we're going to do another right-of-way on the right-hand side of that parcel A. But Okay, but your asphalt uh, driveway currently is over the property line on the east, but you, you indicated that that belonged to your mother? Right, and, and, and actually it's at the, uh, when we built that driveway, that driveway is, is half built on my mother's property, and half built on the, the other side, if that makes any sense. Uh, okay. So, yeah, so, so it's not it's not actually over the property line. So you do have a, an a, uh, approval to have it over the property line because it was accessing the property to the east as well as uh, your property? That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please vote. 
Motion carries. Thank you. All right, that's the end of the uh, consent calendar. We took care of all the items anyway. Uh, first item under the revocation and closing, uh, that item has been postponed. We go down to resubdivision. Uh, first item is RS 15-01-004, Town of Mandeville, southwest quarter of square 237 into lots 1 through 4, Ward 4, District 7. The petitioner is Marity <coughs> Land, LLC. The surveyor is John Cummings and Associates Incorporated. The owner is Marity Land LLC, and this is an honorable uh, Jake Groby's uh, district staff. Hey, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is a proposal where the develop where the owner of the property is proposing to uh, subdivide this quarter square into four lots. Uh, the current zoning of the property is a four single family residential. Uh, the owner is proposing to resubdivide a quarter square into four lots, measuring 88.82 feet in width for each parcel. Uh, the lots meet parish code insofar as meeting the minimum lot size requirements, and the fact that the lots shall be connected uh, to community sewage and water facilities. However, the minimum lot width is just short of the required 90-foot minimum width for an A4 zoning. But since the lots meet all other aspects of parish code, with the exception of being less than one and a half feet short of the minimum 90 foot requirement um, for standard or for a 90 foot uh, in A4, uh, the staff has no objection to the proposed resubdivision request. However, if the commission decides to grant the resubdivision request, a waiver of the parish regulations is required for the proposed lot frontages pursuant to section 40-100. Waiver of regulations of subdivision ordinance 499, which requires a two-thirds majority vote of the commission, eight members, in order to grant said waiver. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this item? I see no one coming forward, so I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Mr. Matthews. Um, you have nobody from Marity Land LLC here to answer any yes. questions? Oh, yes, okay. Um, <laughs> he started to come up. And I was then... wondering. <laughs> he was hoping nobody was going to ask. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> <I> was... <laughs> didn't work. I, I knew I, I knew Mike would ask if, if, if Bill didn't. I thought that was you. So um, the way this is laid out, the, and according to the staff, the only problem with this is uh, one and a half feet on uh, a couple of these lots, on three of these lots uh, for the width, is that correct? That's correct, actually less than that, yes. It's actually, yeah, it is, 88.82. Um, with that being said, and it, everything else meets parish requirements, I'd move to approve. We have a motion by Mr. Matthews to approve, seconded by Mr. Willie. Mr. Randolph? Okay, all right. Any further discussion? Please vote. <coughs> Motion carries and it did get the eight votes. Next item is RS 15-01-005, Red Gap Acres, Block 2, Lot 25 into Lots 25A and 25B, Ward 4, District 5. The petitioners, Anola Thon, uh, Surveyors LS Land Surveying LLC, the owners Nolathon and others. This is in Honorable Jake Groby's uh, council district staff. Hey, Mr. Chairman, this is a, an old subdivision of record, uh, Red Gap Acres, which is located on around Ravine Drive, south of uh, Harrison Avenue, uh, to the north of I'm sorry, I'm sorry, south of Covington, Louisiana. Uh, I think it was approved the subdivision approximately in the 1950s or early 60s. Most of the majority of lots in the subdivision are 100 uh, or 200 by 405. Some are smaller. Um, the lot, uh, the owner is proposing to resubdivide a lot into two substandard lots of record. The property is currently zoned A2 Suburban, which requires a minimum lot frontage of 100 feet and a minimum lot size of one acre, 43,560 square feet. The owner wants to create two lots with only a 100 foot wide frontage for each lot and 40,000 square feet in area. Since, this parish, uh, since the parish is under a mandate by DEQ to eliminate individual sewage systems on substandard lots, which the subdivision has in favor of the community facilities, this proposal would be in direct conflict with said mandate. However, 
It should be noted that the Parish Planning Commission has approved a few resubdivisions of similar nature in the past within this subdivision, basically creating these 100 by 400 and five foot lots. Therefore, if the commission decides to grant the resubdivision request, a waiver of the parish regulations is required for the proposed lot frontage and lot widths pursuant to section 40-100 waiver of regulations of subdivision ordinance 499, which requires a two-thirds majority vote of the commission eight members in order to grant said waiver. Thank you. Uh, anyone in the audience wish to speak on this? Yes, ma'am, come forward. State your name and... Um, Noella Thorne. Uh, my parents purchased these lots in 1960, and I have the original map here. They're quite a few hundred-foot front lots. Okay. And we were able to sell this one on Gulch. It's 100 foot, and this backs right back of it is 200 feet. And this is the one we want to break into 100-foot lots so we can sell it. We've been trying for 10 years to sell this property. There are small homes in the area. There's no big mansions that would, you know, need two big lots. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Mr. Matthews. Um, staff, we're under a mandate from DEQ on, on this type of property? Well, yeah, it's, it, the, the, the mandate is, and I would say I, I don't think it's being enforced, but that's, that's what the EQ wants the Parish of St. Tammany to do is to eventually wean all properties that are on community, uh, individual systems to get on community systems. Realistically, you know, that can't be done at this point in time, but I wanted to point that out, that that is what the parish is trying to strive for. And, and this would uh, put us further behind in the ability to strive for the DEQ mandate. Oh, well, I mean, yes, you're, you would be basically adding additional individual systems on, the, on this property that otherwise would just have one, yes. But the 100-foot the width does not give me as, as much pause as the DEQ mandate, and I, I just, I'm, I'm very concerned about us doing something knowingly in conflict with that mandate uh, it just does not make sense for us to do that or the parish to do that. That does concern me, and I would, I would be against doing this. Mr. Willie? Uh, Ron, are there community uh, services in that area for them to connect to? Uh, to time? my knowledge, no. So there's no, no, no it's an old, it's a, yeah, to it's an old, to. yeah, it's an old subdivision of record. Uh, I, I don't know that, I don't know, I, uh, so would you possibly know where the closest community system is to uh, Red Gap? <laughs> Uh, Utilities Inc. might have um, something in the area to the north of them and but, also to the west, but there's nothing in the area. But somebody today to would have to come. If somebody built uh, a they'd home have to do that one lot, they'd still have to put a, sem uh, a septic tank in today, right? If, or a sewer um, system. If they, if they were unable to divide this lot, then they would be allowed to put a septic tank on the one lot okay. and put one residence there. Okay. Well, I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Willie to approve. Do I have a second? second? We have a second by Mr. Randolph. So we really don't know if there's uh, sewerage there's available to that. There's not right now. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? <coughs> Please vote. And this this requires eight uh, eight votes as well. Mr. Willie, you. <laughs> All right, we have a vote of six to two, uh, so the, the motion would fail. Pardon? He's Manella because he's sitting in his seat. Where were you, Ron, now? <laughs> <laughs> we said that at the beginning of the meeting. <laughs> All right, so the motion fails. You have the right to appeal it to the, to the chairman. I think we have to make. I think we have to affirmatively do something, so we need to have a motion to deny. All right, you're right. Uh, <coughs> will, Mr. You disagree? With, with all due respect to Mr. Matthews, when, when a motion to approve has been made and that vote fails, then it operates as a denial without the necessity of another vote verifying that. 
the, the inverse would not be true. If the motion was a denial and it fails, you would still have to move on the approval. But when a motion to approve fails, it operates as a denial. Okay. Ms. Don, you under, understand that you, you need to appeal this to the uh, uh, council. All right. Page three. Uh, preliminary subdivision, first item has been postponed. Final subdivision review, SD04-08-024 FT16. Bedico Creek, Parcel 16, Ward 1, District 1. Developer owners, Bedico Creek Preserve, LLC. The engineer is Kelly uh, McEwen and Associates. That is a typo, right? Got Kelly McLean. Yeah, it's supposed to be Kelly McLean. Okay. <laughs> That's wrong, copy and paste and stuff. Okay. All right. This is in. <laughs> that happens every single time. Honorable Marty Dean's district. Staff? I don't know how to keep Periodic inspections have been made by this office during construction, and final inspection was made on January 29, 2015. The inspection disclosed that all of the concrete roadways are paved. The road shoulders need to be constructed and the roadside ditches need final dressing. The following uncompleted items existed at the time of final inspection and will be completed before the plats are signed. Items one, two, three, four are okay. Uh, one's okay. Need ditch invert elevations at each property corner and roadway elevations. Uh, three, I'm not quite sure how that got on there. It doesn't apply. Uh, four and five are okay. A negative bacteriological report relative to the construction of the project's water system has not been issued by the Louisiana Department of Health and Hospitals Office of Public Health as required by Section 40-070.0 of the Subdivision Regulatory Ordinance 499. A letter of acceptance and responsibility for the perpetual maintenance and operation of the water and sewer system has not been issued by the utility provider as required. One and two are okay. Need concrete test results. Uh, four is okay. Need street name signs and traffic signs. Need blue reflectors. Should the Planning Commission approve the request for final approval, a warranty obligation will be required for the infrastructure in the amount of $43,800 for a period of five years. The staff recommends approval of the proposed final subdivision request subject to the developer complying with all comments and no plats to be signed until all items are satisfactorily completed. No mandatory developmental fees are required since a public hearing was held prior to January 1st, 2005. Department of Development has no comments. Thank you. Mr. Marone. Thank you, Mr. Daugherty. Paul Marone on behalf of Bedico Creek Preserve. You'll recall that this matter was tabled at last month's meeting because we still had some work left to do out there, uh, including completing the streets and the drainage and so forth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as of today, uh, all of the streets are in, all the major infrastructure is completed. Uh, the only work that is left uh, is the, the dressing of the ditches, which they were in the process of doing today and which they'll be finishing up shortly. Um, in regards to a few of the plat items, um, noted uh, number two under section B on the paving and drainage plan. Um, we believe that we had addressed that in the submittal that the staff received today, but if that's not the case, then we'll certainly follow up and make sure that we get that corrected for them uh, tomorrow. Um, as to the sewer and water, all of the sewer and water infrastructure is in. However, in order to uh, get the bacteriological report, we've got to pressurize the lines. Uh, before we can pressurize the lines, we've got to finish dressing the ditches. So it's a chicken and the egg. We're ready to go there, but we can't pressurize the lines to take the test until the, the ditches are done. So uh, we hope to have those ditches done very shortly. As soon as that's done, we can pressurize the lines, get our report, and hopefully get our letter of acceptance. Um, the concrete test results are done. Um, I, in fact, I have a copy here with me. We'll make sure that, uh, that those are submitted to your staff first thing in the morning uh, so that that item can be taken care of. Finally, the last two items are the street signs and the blue reflectors. Uh, the street signs have been ordered. Uh, we expect them in shortly. If they're not in by next week, then we'll use the temporary signs uh, and um, so that we can move forward with the, uh, with the signing of the plats and we'll be uh, putting the final signs in if and when they come in. 
Uh, the blue reflectors are the last items that we put in, uh, simply because if we put them in too early while there's work going on, they're damaged and removed. So um, those are in as well. We're ready to do that. We just want to finish the, 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 the construction on the, the ditch dressing. So uh, all of these items that are left are minor. Uh, we hope to have them finished shortly. We'd respectfully request your approval uh, for uh, parcel 16, uh, subject to the staff comments and finishing these last few punch list items. Thank you, Mr. Marone. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Uh, Mr. Matthews. Uh, Paul, just a couple of quick things. Um, <clears throat> The uh, municipal addresses, the 911, that has been completed? That's done. Okay. And you are representing here tonight that the street signs, <coughs> street name signs and traffic signs uh, of some type, even temporary, will be up within the next 30 days and possibly the permanent within the next 30 days? Absolutely. I, I would think the permanent will be up within the next 30 days, the temporary yeah. within the next week, week and a half. And the blue refract, blue reflectors also yes sir okay just a note in, in <clears throat> excuse me in looking at the plat it looks like uh, a couple of these uh, lots lots uh, 659 and 660 the existing pond encroaches on those lots is that correct Yes, well, I see what you're looking at on the final plan where it looks like uh, within that rear setback, <clears throat> excuse me, a portion of the pond does encroach on 659. Um, so it would, it would suggest that there is a slight encroachment of the pond onto that lot, but it's within the setback line. Okay, is, is that something that's going to be addressed? Or does the, and it looks like the way the, the lines are at 660 also, are these just going to be two things that the lot owner is going to have to deal with? Uh, it could be. I'd want to confirm that with Mr. McHugh, but it's not. Uh, it very well could be that uh, uh, that they have uh, true waterfront property. <laughs> 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 uh, um, Front, and, side, top, back. <laughs> and uh, so, but um, I would want to verify that, that in fact um, it does encroach into the lot. But if it does, then, uh, then yes, that would be identified, and um, that would just be part of the part of the transfer to to, to the owner that he would just have want to that. Make sure that that's clearly identified on on yes, the sir. surveys. Yes, sir. Uh, that being addressed, uh, I see no other reason not to approve. You have a motion to approve, Mr. Matthews. Uh, well, we have another light on. Okay, a couple of other fine. lights on. That's fine. Mr. Randolph. Yes. Paul. Yes, sir. Under the Department of Engineering, uh, do you want to go to carry a motion before? I no, that's fine. We'll, we'll okay. do the motion after. Um, the inspection dis disclosed something about the concrete need to be paved and the ditches need to be dressed. Is that all a part of what you're talking about on under paving and under the sewage and water and with the reflectors? Making uh, sure all of that is done before you can really move forward is... That's well. That's the, there are two separate things there. The, the the first reference to the concrete streets and the ditches is um, is actual physical work that we've got to do. We've got to complete those. Which the streets are all done, the ditches are in, but we are doing the final grade and the dressing of those ditches. The other items that you see on page two um, are either items on the plat which we need to to address from the engineer which is a certain notation or, or identification on the plat, and then um, the installation of the street, street signs, road signs, and the blue reflectors. Uh, so all of those would be uh, subject to completion before we could get our plats filed. With that being said, I second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lawrence. Oh, one yes. quick question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Looking at the plat, I realize the restricted covenants that you've got listed on the plat itself may not be the complete list of restricted covenants, but a subdivision as big as Bedico Creek, the question I have is, is homeowner association membership a requirement? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Thank you. 
All right. Uh, any further discussion? Just in case it wasn't formally done, I'll make a motion to approve formally. Mr. Matthews, the motion to approve, seconded by Mr. Second Randolph formally. and Mr. Lorne and Mr. <laughs> Willie. We, we got all kinds of seconds on that one. <laughs> Please vote. If only the seconds vote for Motion carries. Thank you. All right. The next item is a, an item that uh, we've been working on for about a year, year and a half, and we finally have it put together, and, and uh, everyone uh, was given a copy. This is under new business, uh, an ordinance to amend and reenact Chapter 18, Article 3 and 4 of the St. Tammany Parish Code of Ordinances relative to St. Tammany Parish Planning and Zoning Commission rules that they operate under. Uh, myself, Mr. Matthews, and Mr. Manella, uh, we started working on this thing, like I said, about a year, year and a half ago. And what you were given in an email, and I guess, Mr. Willie, you were probably given hand give, uh, handed a, a copy. Um, so I guess the hopefully everybody has taken time to, to read through this. It uh, took a lot of time, and, and as well as uh, legal, Mr. Uh, Savant and Mr. Hand, they... We kept them going, and in between their real important stuff, we <laughs> put, finally got this put together. So is there any questions or comments from the commission on this? Mr. Lloyd? As it pertains both to the Planning Commission and the Zoning Commission, under Item 18-036, item E and F, having to do with the people being replaced when there's a vacancy. I think tonight has been a good example of it. We've got eight people here tonight, and it, there's been several votes tonight that required eight votes. That's so correct. it had to be unanimous for anything to pass. And I just think 100 days to replace either the planning or zoning commissioner is a little bit excessive. I'd like to recommend we change that to 75 days. If the yes. council wants to change that to 100, so be it. But. I just think it puts us at a disadvantage when we're here trying to conduct business and it takes a unanimous vote for so many of the items that, that that's passed the planning staff or the zoning staff, it comes to us and it takes eight votes. It, I just think that's a little bit strenuous. I'd like to recommend 75 days. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, just procedurally, it might be better if we get a motion to approve and a second, and then that could be a motion to amend. Uh, I will make a motion to approve. And I'll make a motion to second. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Matthews to second, and, and a motion to approve, and a second by Mr. Lorne uh, as a second. Okay, and then Mr. Lorne would like to make an amendment to that amendment, motion. I'll make a motion. I make amendment that we change the 100 days to 75 days. And I'll second it. Okay, that, uh, now that is on both the planning and the zoning. Is that correct? correct? Okay. Any further discussion on the amendment? Please vote. Uh, motion carries. Okay, now we got... Uh, uh, gentleman David, standing at the mic that, uh, yes. One, one, one last thing before we leave this. <clears throat> On behalf of the commissioners, I'd like to commend the committee that worked so hard to put this together. I'd like to thank you for your efforts. Thank you. I second that. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, Carla Hernandez. Uh, procedurally, I'm, I'm, uh, this is the planning commission meeting. It also, this, this deals with both planning and zoning. My question is, will this also be heard 
by the Zoning Commission in its March meeting is my first question. Does someone know that? <clears throat> oh, Mr. Hernandez, the Planning Commission chair had asked me that question the other day and I advised him that I didn't believe it was necessary to do so since all of the members of the Planning Commission also serve on the Zoning Commission. So there isn't necessarily uh, a formal requirement that the Zoning Commission, you know, make an opinion uh, about its rules in a separate meeting when they are essentially reviewing the same as in their capacity as a planning commission. If the commissioners of the planning commission wish to place the matter on the agenda of the zoning commission uh, and review it essentially again, before sending it to the council, it certainly can do so, but I don't believe I, I would request that. And, and let, me, let me just, just procedurally, let me point out something to you, and you tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong or not. Um, we, we have two distinct bodies here. Both members are, are the same for, uh, for both. Interestingly enough, the, um, the January meeting, first meeting of the zoning, um, elected a chairperson and a vice chairperson. Okay, then for the uh, planning meeting, the same person who was elected uh, chaired, chaired that without any formal vote taken by the planning commission. Now I question whether that should have, you know, should have happened or not. It seems to me that the planning commission should have formally voted to have uh, now the chair and, and the vice chair again in, in you know, just formally, even though they're the same zoning and, and plan commission. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of, of, of some of these comments, and again, I'm requesting that, that, that zoning uh, give us um, additional opportunity. W one of the questions is, I guess, another procedural question, mm -hmm. and having to do with, the, uh, I guess, 1836 and uh, D. Now, the, the change in, in that, it says, any member who fails to appear at two consecutive planning commission meetings may, as opposed to shall, may be removed by his or her appointing authority. Members may also be removed at any time with cause by the appointing authority. A majority vote of the Paris Council is required to remove members appointed by the Paris Council. Now, we note that some of the changes that have been made to, to that, and those of us who have been around a while can probably point out where there have been, and, and just, just for the public's knowledge, when we say two consecutive planning commission meetings, we're talking about if they miss, let's say, the January planning commission meeting and then the February planning commission meeting, as opposed to the planning and then zoning meeting, you know, one week apart. That, that would not apply, except that if the following month, then it would apply, given the old standards. And, and, and the thing that that is curious is the automatically remove, which of course we could cite examples, I can certainly cite examples, well that did not take place. And, and I guess now I'm wondering how will it take when it says may? I mean, may means that someone, the, 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 the chair, the, the secretary, someone will inform the appointing authority that now, you know, this person has missed two, two, two meetings and it may now, as opposed to shall, it may be subject to removal, that, that individual. And is, is that the way it's intended to, to work, that someone will notify the appointing authority, uh, be it, if it's the, the council, I guess it would be the chair of... Carl, I'll address that if you give me a second. Uh, as the person probably the most concerned with that particular article, uh, I think you're correct. Uh, this is an attempt to correct the problem that we have been faced with for a very long time, as long as I've known about the commission and been on the commission. Uh, and it was decided that an automatic removal was really inappropriate for a couple of reasons. One, that uh, a person could miss two meetings for a very good reason and should not be automatically removed uh, when there is a good reason. And secondly, um, it hadn't been followed since uh, I knew about. So this was an attempt to change it to something 
that one was what we were actually doing and two to what we probably should be doing. And if a person misses two consecutive meetings of the planning commission, then they could be removed by the appointing authority, whether that be the parish president or the parish council. They can be removed, not shall be removed. If they miss a planning commission meeting and a zoning commission meeting consecutively, this in fact does not apply. And you're correct, but that was, this is very intentional to correct a problem that we all saw was there and to make it right. And we, I think we are going to recommend that to the council. So procedurally, is that, is that what you see happening, that it would then be up to the chair or, or secretary or someone then to notify the appointing authority that, yes, exactly. this, this person exactly. has That's exactly missing. what would happen. Exactly. You got it right. Okay. All right. Um, regarding uh, appeals, and, and, you know, it's interesting that Mr. Doherty is, is sitting in, in, in the chair right now because I, I and for a long time, I know that you've been, you know, sitting there for, for a long time in, in back, back in the day, too, as, as, as a juror. The interesting thing is that you would say in, in many meetings, at planning meetings, that the appeals cards were over here. Anything that's considered by the, you know, the, the planning commission can be appealed. The thing is that it can be appealed except for the final subdivision. And so I guess, you know, and I, I, my question is, and it still remains like that today, and my question is, I know other jurisdictions have it that you can appeal, you know, everything to, to, the, to the council. And I'm curious, I know state law and everything, but I'm curious as to why that wasn't considered changing that. So that all appeals, meaning, I mean, sub, you know, subdivisions, preliminary, and all, all the others, you know, would not also, final, would also not, you know, also be, you know, considered going to the council. I'm going to let Mr. Answer that. Right, and if I understand your point correctly, Mr. Hernandez, under state law, final subdivision approval can only, or denial, can only be appealed to the council by the applicant. Uh, a person under state law cannot appeal a final subdivision approval to the parish council. So what this is intended to say is any person aggrieved by the Planning Commission in its action regarding a tentative subdivision approval or a preliminary subdivision approval may ap appeal to the Parish Council. However, the only person that can appeal a final subdivision approval, uh, deny, a final subdivision action by the Commission to the Council is the applicant uh, appealing a denial of the Planning Commission of final subdivision approval. Okay, well I didn't have enough time to go back and look at all the other jurisdictions which I know can also, you know, appeal a final to, to, to but you're shaking your head no, but I, it was my understanding, I thought that that was in fact possible, but if you're Mr. telling me Mr. no. Mr. Smart pointed out to us in the committee that this was state law. Yes, and I, and I think there are exceptions to state law that other jurisdictions, quote unquote, are permitted that action, but uh, if, but if, I haven't. If you'd I, like to bring those to us, we'll I you know I tell you what I, I like I said I didn't have enough time to go through all that, but you know and many of the other changes that were done I think are are exceptional changes. I think there, you know some some very good changes, and you know I just hope that I you know do have the ability to uh, again look at the information here and and come back to you in, at the March meeting and uh, make some additional comments to to that. Um, you know, those of us who, and uh, you know, the first time I looked at it was when you all mentioned it at the, at the Zoning Commission meeting, and, and so I, I went online, and sure enough, I found it there. But, you know, honestly, you know, to read the, you know, whatever it is, 47 pages that, um, or is it 57, whatever, whatever the number of pages are that, that, that are on there, I mean, it, it, admittedly, m many of the same changes were made to zoning and, and to planning. I, I, I recognize that, but there, there are some nuances which are, which are interesting, and I would hopefully like to bring those up, and one of them, of course, I just spoke about, and I'd like to, you know, maybe cite some examples as to, uh, as to that. Thank you. And, and Mr. Her Hernandez, excuse me, sure. uh, Mr. Matthew, um, remember that 
if the commission does refer the ordinance to the council, it will then appear on the council's agenda at least two times. So arguably you would also have the opportunity to make your comments regarding this ordinance before the council on, on two occasions. Um, I'm well aware of that. Thank okay. you. Mr. Daniels, one, one quick question, uh, one quick comment rather. Uh, I understand that uh, reading this took some time. Uh, I have done this probably 50 times, uh, making comments, making changes. Uh, so yeah, I understand what it takes to do that. Uh, secondly, this is not now, uh, once we recommend it to the council and the council ultimately hopefully passes it, it is not chiseled in stone. Uh, if you have some comments that are clearly we need to make some revisions that we have not made, please bring them to us. Uh, the commission as a whole or a committee appointed by the chair will review those and if we, we agree with you, then we will of course recommend those changes to the council. So just because they're here and they're printed up nice doesn't mean that they can't be changed because the original ones that we were faced with a couple of years ago when we first started doing this, we've changed them. We can change them again. You know, I'll, I won't belabor the point, but you know, one of the interesting points that was made earlier today was, uh, tonight was the fact that the, with, with assuming that these changes take place here as, as written, it, it will now take eight to form a quorum here of, of, of this, which in the past, it was, it was six. And so that's, it, that's interesting that, that that would be done that way. And um, let's just say I can recall a couple of occasions where there were six members that yeah. were present and that it took all six votes, everyone agreeing, in order for that to happen. And so I can understand maybe why you would do that. The other interesting point, though, is regarding committees. Now you have, you know, you say five, again, going to the total of, of 11. If, if a quorum, you know, now is, is eight, why couldn't you go to six or, or seven on a committee? You know, because it's still not a quorum. So, um, you know, it's just something, something else to consider. Thank you. I think it was a number that, that we all agreed on, uh, that it was not necessary to have more than five on a, a, uh, a committee. And, you know, again, it's just a number, and, yeah, it could be changed. And like Mr. Matthew said, this, a lot of things can be changed in here, but we put a lot of time and effort, as you can well see, uh, putting this thing together, bringing it into uh, 2014, 2015, because what was there was so out of date, it was just not, I'm surprised we didn't get shot somewhere down the road. Yeah, but, and Mr. Hannon, the, the changing the quorum to eight uh, was something that took a great deal of discussion in the committee. Uh, some fairly heated discussion in the committee, uh, but it was felt that some of our business requires eight votes. So when, when we meet and we meet with a quorum, we should be able to conduct all of the business of the commission, not just some of the business of the commission. That's why we changed it from six to eight. So if we have a quorum, we can get eight votes. We may not, but we can get eight votes. Um, as to there being six members here on occasion, uh, we, we did a kind of cursory check and no one can remember there not ever being at least eight members here uh, for a commission meeting. Uh, and it, it may be before our time, but none of us remember a, chance, a time when there were not at least eight and all, all, for sure always six. Um, but again, that's something that could be changed. We felt five was a workable number for a committee, or no more than five. Uh, we had been working with three for some reason, and I don't know why we had limited to three. So we had the opportunity to add two more commission members to any committee, uh, and we thought that that was appropriate. Is it appropriate? That's what we thought, and hopefully the commission as a whole will think that and, and approve this tonight. Uh, if later on we find out that five is not the right number, we'll change it back either to three or to seven or whatever is appropriate. But right now we think five is the appropriate number and that's why we took it. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Randolph? Yes, um, 
Under section 18036.07, meetings, hearings, and procedures. Get them to be quiet. Which item? Um, item number, item J. The chair, without objection from the commission, may arrange individual items on the particular agenda, if necessary, for the expeditious conduct of business. And I see the lined out section, I understand that. So if items are rearranged uh, on the agenda, are we saying that there's no need to motion the repositioning of those items, or do we just shift items on the agenda the way we want? That's where we move out. Well, okay, when we, when we change this, what this is doing is that the chair can move, if there's a reason to move item 26 up to item one, the chair can do that without the, uh, if there's no objection from the commission. However, a commission member can also make that motion. That does not preclude a commission member from making that motion. Mike, do you agree? And, and, and I agree, Mr. Matthews, and also, Ron, you see it at almost every meeting when the first question of the meeting um, is typically asking staff if there's any matters that need to be postponed or handled specially. Yes, and so, this process would allow what is currently being done where the chairman can just address those items individually rather than formally moving them up to the top of the agenda by vote of the commission for each and every one before you take action on it. Mr. Richard. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask legal a, a question. Uh, I had a very similar thought when I was reading it that we had failed or perhaps failed to elect a chair and a vice chair at, at the subsequent meeting, and that being the planning meeting. Is that something we need to rectify, or do you feel that uh, we're operating appropriately? Uh, I, I think that you, Mr. Richard, can do it either way. Um, and the reason I say that is because most jurisdictions have one body, the planning commission. It just happens that the parish, and they handle both planning matters and zoning matters. It just happens that in this parish, there are so many matters for that commission to handle uh, in a meeting, you bifurcate the meetings. And so you handle planning commission items on, at one meeting and zoning commission items on a second. I would suggest to you that if the planning commission acted um, with the intention of setting the chair and vice chair for both commissions at one meeting rather than doing it twice, that would be appropriate. But you could certainly do it the other way as well. Thank you. Uh, then I would recommend uh, after we finish this business that we just go ahead and ratify what we're already doing and have a, a quick vote on our chair and our vice chair. Todd, I don't you, think that could hurt. <laughs> you, you can do that by unanimous vote of the commission to add that matter on your agenda. And Mr. Randolph. Besides, the individuals who aren't here are the ones we'll elect. So. <laughs> that, that'll teach them. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Randolph. Well, that was my point um, in that we have some of the officers not here. Um, should we continue with conducting that that election or that ratification without them being here? Sure. Okay, that's yeah. fine. That's you you fine. always elect people that aren't there sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. It was right there. <laughs> All right. Is there any further discussion on uh, these two? Uh, this will go forward as two ordinances, right, or one ordinance? This is one ordinance. One ordinance. Okay. We have, do, do we have a motion and a yes. second? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All we need is a vote. Please. I'll, yeah, we've got. Uh, and we voted on the amendment. Yeah. Well, we voted on the amendment, so we need a, a motion as amended. Correct. Okay. So moved as amended. Motion. 
Motion by Mr. Matthews on the motion as amended. Second by Mr. Richard. Please vote. Motion carries. Eight to nothing. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Richard, uh, you want to make a motion to open the agenda? I'd like to make a motion to open the agenda for the election of our officers. Motion and a second uh, by Mr. Matthews to open the agenda for the purpose of uh, uh, electing uh, officers for the Planning Commission. Please vote. Motion carries. All right, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move that we elect uh, Mr. Manella as our chair. And I would like, to, do we have to have separate uh, motions or can we have combine them? I, I would suggest that you vote upon them individually. Thank okay. you. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Richard Second. to elect uh, Mr. Manella as uh, chairman, seconded by Mr. Randolph. Please vote. Motion carries. Mr. Richard? Yes, I'd like to elect uh, Mr. or put nominate uh, Mr. Davis as vice chair. I'll second that. We have a motion by Mr. Richard, seconded by Mr. Lorne to uh, elect Mr. Davis as vice chair. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Is there any other business that needs to come before the commission? I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Thank you all. And th there'll be a test at the next meeting on these uh, new rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>